Hi, uh, I'm Reed Kramer. I direct the Asset Building Program here at the New America Foundation. And uh, I'm here with John Gravois, who's an editor at Washington Monthly Magazine. Uh, and we're here to talk about their latest uh, issue this month, Hitting the Newsstands, uh, which almost entirely is devoted to exploring how the future of success in America is going to require a lot more than just jobs. Um, as the articles reveal, uh, it's going to depend on enabling families to save, uh, to rebuild and stabilize their balance sheets, and to build up uh, a broad array of, of assets, both human and uh, financial. Uh, and it would also help a great deal if we could prevent collectively people from getting ripped off in the financial services marketplace. And uh, that's where John's article comes in. Uh, he took a close look at the startup phase of the new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which I think was one of the most significant pieces of the Dodd-Frank Financial Reform Act uh, passed uh, two years ago. Um, so uh, you entitled your article, Too Important to Fail. Tell us a little bit about what the CFPB is and what, uh, what, why we all have a stake in its success. As you said, the CFPB is a, is a new agency created under the Dodd-Frank Financial Reform Act. Its, uh, its mission is to protect the American consumer from financial practices that are abusive and deceptive and uh, to keep the market fair, transparent, and competitive. Right. That's the statutory language. And people yeah. before thought that maybe we had that in place already. The other banking regulators were supposed to protect consumers. Right. Consumer protection was a, a kind of second or third tier concern right. spread out among uh, a, a handful of, of banking regulators. And in my reporting, uh, when I asked people about the sort of the old days, they, 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 they called that mission a, a, a bastard stepchild mission. Right. Um, it, was a, it, was a, it, it took a, a back seat and conflicted sometimes with the prime mission of most banking regulators, which was to ensure the safety and soundness of right. banks. So there was conflict. Now we've created a new entity, and its primary mission is Protect consumers. Protect consumers. Be you know, be a cop on the beat, uh, um, which is a, a phrase that Elizabeth Warren, who 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 was sort of the architect of the agency, uses a lot. Um, but it also has this uh, this dual mandate to to keep the market safe, reshape the marketplace, but also reshape it in such a way that it doesn't cut off access to financial products. Right. So it can, it can create access for existing consumers. What about the, the level playing field? This has been opposed by a lot of the financial uh, sector, apparently. Uh, I see there's an upside to, for them, too. They don't have to compete with some of the nefarious actors right. that are outside of the scope. Y you see some accounts of the financial crisis as saying that a lot of the uh, subprime practices sort of percolated up in the unregulated parts of the financial market, the right. non-bank actors. Right. And once they started to sort of flourish there, the virus couldn't help but spread into the, the big guys because they had to compete. Um, and uh, so you had a kind of race to the bottom out in the marketplace. And then you, you also had this at the same time, this kind of race to, bottom, to the bottom in the regulatory landscape where, where a lot of the financial regulators were kind of competing with each other on laxity, on offering laxity in, right. in regulation. And if you can cut off those kind of uh, unsavory characters that have been unregulated, uh, that have been providing products that aren't appropriate for people, that their business model was trapping people into debt, or uh, they didn't have any you know, kind of skin in the game for someone succeeding, if you cut them out, the existing, the, the ones that are left to compete could actually do so fairly and competitively. Uh, they would refine their product offerings. Right. You, uh, you, 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 there, you, you would think that, uh, that, that there would be at least some case for, 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 the, for the banks, for, for regulated financial institutions to, uh, to feel like this is a good thing. Yeah, so, the so, so far, that's not the line. Yeah. The culture of the agency is really interesting. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's not it, drawn from the sort of typical talent pools that Washington draws mm -hmm. from. It's got a lot of people working in government for the first time. Uh, you have um, Sometimes people describe Washington as as a as a as a giant uh, sort of uh, battlefield between lawyers and economists. I thought you were going to say cesspool, but uh, that might be the same thing. Go on, okay. A battlefield adjacent to a cesspool. Yes, okay. Uh, but I, I think the CFPB is maybe uh, a little tilted on the lawyers' side. But it's it's interesting they have this this whole uh, research mission 
and uh, th there's economists there, but they're also talking about bringing in psychologists. There's a lot of, uh, and marketing people, there's a lot of interest in behavioral economics there, as yeah. there is across the Obama administration. Um, and I think because of the association with Warren and her profile as a sort of, I mean, she's, she's kind of become a folk hero. She drew, her, her, being associated with her drew a lot of folks who you wouldn't normally see in, right. in, um, in, in government. Uh, so there's a real sense of mission, and, and, and the culture is, is, is pretty high-minded. Uh, and I think that's going to be important as the Bureau becomes two, three, four, if it survives, years old. Yeah. Um, uh, a, a, a bureaucratic culture that has a lot of self-respect is is going to be a lot more uh, is going to be a lot less easy to co-opt. Yeah. I think. Yeah. No, it's a really interesting uh, endeavor, and of course, um, as you're looking at the way families access a whole range of financial services in the marketplace. I mean, this is going to possibly affect how people access mortgages, credit cards, how they cash checks, what the terms and conditions right. are in every kind of savings account, checking account that's out there. Right. So it really has the ability to, to really potentially reshape these basic relationships with the financial sector. Right. I mean, th these, are, these are services that are uh, Ubiquitous. We all use them. There, we. I mean, it, it's it's a it's a an industry that that includes you know where, how we store our, mo our money, how we make payments, how we save, how we get credit, uh, and the marketplace for its ubiquity is 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 is, is sort of remarkably opaque yeah. to people. And and a big part of the mission, what all what all the you know sort of the the talent, the sort of um, the 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 bright folks at the CFPB will be um, trying to make this marketplace send clearer signals and have uh, institutions in that marketplace compete on value to the consumer instead of w what happened in the in the run-up of the financial crisis and and really for you know it was building for a long long time where where institutions were at times competing on how best to hide the ball from the consumer right. how best to bury Costs in the back end, yeah. and uh, and then and and sort of lure people in with with um, teasers. Yeah, no, I mean uh, hidden fees yeah. uh, is uh, not a great business model, uh, and we should be looking ways to kind of shut that those kind of practices down. Uh, what I think is interesting about the agency is its potential to really um, become. Uh, um, uh, setting standards and expectations mm -hmm. for the consumer, shutting out some of the nefarious practices that don't belong in the marketplace, and creating opportunities for both the providers of financial services uh, to thrive and also families um, to access uh, services that make a difference in their lives. I think that the CFPB has a lot of potential in its ability to reshape the marketplace if it is able to articulate the standards and expectations that help achieve the principles that was part of their founding for, for transparency, matching people with appropriate products mm -hmm. that meet their, 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 their circumstance and that they're fair and, and, and not getting, uh, getting ripped off. And I think if they do that uh, and gets rid of some of the nefarious actors that are on the side, it can potentially come up with a way of, the of meeting of that dual mandate instead exactly of the downside. Both of but those uh, pieces. Yeah, the, the, the question is whether the Bureau survives, and then whether it can really um, maintain the kind of independence vis-a-vis -vis the marketplace it regulates to, to, to really keep, keep on, the, on the bright side of that yeah. equation. Well, there's a lot uh, for them to pursue, uh, a lot more to be uh, told. Uh, it's a great uh, piece, uh, and you can uh, turn into the Washington Monthly website to read more of John's uh, article on the CPB and its uh, uh, un unfolding uh, startup phase. Um, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Okay.